We want peace in a nonviolent world, but in order to do so, we face difficult challenges and oppositions. We talk about life in such a fragile matter, but instead we should talk in a courageous, confident way. War is bloody and violent, but in order to have a more efficient world, we have to defeat a problem that is larger than one can handle. So why should we let ISIS take what they want from us? We are a free country. We have never been a country to take orders without standing up for what we believe in. So why should we start now? The quote, one flag, one land, one heart, one nation, evermore, by Oliver Wendell Holmes, tells me that we are all different, but our heart is binded together because we love our country, and we will do anything to protect what we love. So why shouldn't we fight for our country? Not for money, but for, but for freedom of the thought of being left alone from such a faulty terrorist group. In the Declaration of Independence, the phrase, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness tells me that we are a country that believes in all these notions. Yet we contradict ourselves when we let others control our lives and how we run our country. We want the best for our country and for our people, and having a ground war with ISIS is what we can do to stand up for what we believe in. This is not just a fight for the U.S., it is a fight for the Middle Eastern countries that have been terrorized by the group of people. Let's be clear about ISIS. They have rampaged across cities and villages, killing innocent, unarmed civilians in cowardly acts of violence. No just God would stand for what they did yesterday and what they do every single day. Our second is money. We, the United States of America, have money to have a ground war with ISIS. ISIS is one of the richest terrorist groups in the world, but they have been spending money so fast that if we have a ground war with them, they won't have the money to fight. ISIS may be facing a cash crunch, says Michael Sheehan. They have been spending so much money on the other objectives, such as paying their troops and not handling the money efficiently, that they aren't ready to have a ground war. Our third is territory. Also has to do with money. ISIS wants to keep their territory, which is really expensive. So how are we going to have money to spend on the ground war? Why do you think they are taking hostages? They need more money and they are trying to find every way to get money. Hostages, oil, revenues, and donations. We have money, power, resources, etc. That makes us stronger. This war is a test to our country to see if we are ready. Yeah. But we don't really have money. We're in the debt right now over trillions of dollars and we don't really have the money to send troops or the resources at this point. But we have more money than they do. Like, if if they, since they are like, um, they're asking for donations, we will be in debt, but it also will, like, it will be able to, like, uh, have a ground war even if we go in debt, because I mean, like, we're already in debt. So if we pay them, they have no money, how will they pay us back? What do you mean? We're not paying them. Like, you said they're, we're in debt, so I mean, they're like asking for money, like that's why they do the whatever thing with the things. So. But we're not paying ISIS. Well, I know that. It's just like they're asking for money, but then we're not going to give it to them. So then, like, what's the point about like giving them money for? Okay. The war is a test to our country to see if we are ready to for anything or anyone that tries to reject our objectives in the world. decade we've been at war with Iraq, constantly losing troops through the war and causing harm to innocent civilians who stood in our way. The war was costly and took our nation surplus into a national debt under the president who started the war. It has not proven to be effective in the obtaining peace with the Middle East and if anything. It has made things worse between America and the Middle East, like the extreme group ISIS that we know today. The war in the Middle East was a war with terrorists and it has not helped our country with anything. The outcome of the war has shown us fighting terrorism overseas is not worth the cost, especially when countries with strong military forces are near the scene of the fighting, like Britain, France, Germany, and Russia. If these countries don't see a reason to fight the terrorists, 
then there shouldn't be any good reason for the U.S. to send troops overseas to fight. Yes? Okay, so you're saying that uh, we should let them kill innocent people and let them get away with our people getting killed? Just because other countries are too afraid to stand up for what they believe in? We say that again? <laughs> so, all right. So you're saying that we shouldn't have a ground war with ISIS because all the other countries don't want to have a ground war with their terrorist groups, but they're killing innocent people. So is that what you're saying, that we shouldn't have a ground war because other countries aren't having a ground war with the terrorists? I'm not saying that. It's just I'm saying we shouldn't get involved. Like, it would be, it'd just be the same. Like, it, it, we shouldn't get involved with it because it would be, like, costly and plus they're killing their own innocent people that, I mean, what's the point of them? Like, we need to get into that. If we do get to go to the Middle East and fight ISIS, it will take our debt to an even higher level than it is right now, and we will end up with our troops spread in thin. Numbers, numbers across the globe, about 1,600 American troops have already been sent to protect diplomatic facilities and to advise with Iraq and Kurdish forces. There's a realistic possibility that these non-combat non troops will find themselves in a combat situation. So why spend the money to send them out there? We're not talking about a few thousand, we're talking about a few million dollars so they can get the troops caught out right and supplies all they need to make it home safely. The elected Iraqi government says foreign combat troops are not necessary, nor one. The Prime Minister even said we won't allow them full stop. A combat role would require overriding the will of an elected government and violate Iraqi sovereignty. It is very poss possible that Iraq would end its diplomatic immunity for U.S. soldiers tightening the dangers they face. Iraq government has the most has the most to lose from the Islamic State if Iraq Iraq government says that a US combat rule on the ground is unnecessary, then we should respect that their confidence. Thank you. Okay, in round one, thank you.